Hello and welcome to the Get Creative Podcast, the podcast for creatives by creatives. I'm Evan Schmidt and my guest today is Ed Ball. He's a landscape architect. All right, Ed, welcome to the show. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Evan. My name's Ed Ball. I'm a landscape architect. Uh, I've designed gardens in the Washington, D.C. area and uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, and in the Bahamas. And uh, principally, they're residential gardens for uh, homeowners, all, all sorts of different outdoor entertaining spaces. And you've you've had two decades of experience doing that, which is a very unique field and the the first one that's been on this show. Um, So what's something important that you've learned as a creative or as an individual that uh, comes to mind? Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, as a landscape architect, I'm also, you know, kind of a serial entrepreneur as one of my clients described me one day. And I'm always looking at the business aspects. But I think what's interesting is when you go to a new home, and I think you could speak to this as yourself is you can very easily change the paint colors or change the walls or what have you. But when you go outside, it's really hard to define the space. Where is the room? Where are the walls? Where's the ceiling? So as a landscape architect, we really have to kind of help translate that for the client and help create the walls and the ceilings and the floors so that they, they can uh, and enjoy the space. Um, not only, you know, as a larger space or if it's a really small space as a, as a bigger space, but it also still needs to be intimate. So you have to have your visual viewpoints uh, to make the space either bigger or smaller. And then at the same time, you, you really have to de- define your walls and ceilings so that it's an intimate space that you feel comfortable in hanging out. Because what I have found over the last 20 years is the progression, people are building homes, they're building really nice homes at whatever your financial situation is, but they're really exploring the outdoors and spending more and more time outdoors. I think some of that has to do with, uh, you know, we spend so much time inside uh, in our offices or what have you, that whenever we can have the opportunity to break away from technology and have some peace uh, outside, I think that it's, you know, it's, peaceful and it, it, I think it helps people kind of reevaluate and recenter themselves and rebalance themselves for the upcoming week or the next day or what have you. Great. Yeah. I mean, the outdoor space, I love going into my backyard when I get home. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I've never thought of it that way as like a space in contrast to the interior, the exterior. It's, it's so like anything is possible really so um so what are you working on right now what uh what gets you excited these days so we're uh working on a couple of different projects right now um one is a really cool outdoor entertaining space with an outdoor fireplace uh it has a pergola or an arbor as a lot of people refer to it and an outdoor kitchen and it's all built of stone and stone walls and this is an interesting situation because the client originally had us design a pool. And then after thinking about it, they realized, you know, a pool would be great for an outdoor space, but this is just not something that they're going to use every day. So they changed gears and we redesigned the space to something that would be more functional for them. Hmm. Uh, and then, you know, we're working on a couple of other projects, but I think one of the big things that I'm really trying to spin in is, is, greater sustainability and reducing impact on the environment. Um, because I think a lot of people outside of your typical uh, recycling, like I recycle every day, so I feel like I'm reducing my impact on the environment or maybe I use less water. But I don't think people know how to take it a step further to, to reduce their impact on the environment. And that's something that Um, We try to educate our clients on how to reduce the ambient temperature so that the space is more functional. You know, for example, in July and August in Virginia, it's really hot and people have spent money on an outdoor space. They've invested in these outdoor spaces. They're essentially extensions of their homes. 
and they can't use them or they don't want to use them or they're less likely to use them because it is so hot. So we try to, you know, get more shade into the environment because the more shade and leaf coverage you do have uh, protecting you from the sun, you're going to reduce your ambient temperature up to 10 degrees. And we also try to help people understand how they can reduce the amount of water runoff. Um, you know, a lot of governments have spent a lot of time trying to reduce water runoff. And we were working on a project last year where, you know, in a lot of develop urban areas around the United States, homes are, you know, that were built, say, in the 50s or 60s or 70s are being torn down and new homes are being built. But the zoning and the water and the water runoff requirements are just not keeping up with these changes. And you get this confluence of water that's coming down pro property line, which, you know, you can have standing water, which create mosquito issues and things like that. So we, in this one subject area or one particular case, we actually took a lot of the water and put it underground and really tried to get it to be back into the groundwater table rather than just running off and continually, you know, running downstream and affecting waterways and things like that downstream. So one, we're improving water quality. Two, we're putting water back into the groundwater table. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to educate clients a little bit more about how they can live more sustainability, st sustainable and reduce their impact on the environment. Well, that's pretty pretty cool and very very macro issue in regards to the water runoff. So where can uh, people find you? Uh, we you can find us at uh, www.exqext.com. Uh, that's our landscape architecture business. It's exquisite exteriors, and we also have another site called Verde Sources, which focuses more on sustainability. You can reach me on Twitter at it's Ed Ball. And uh, right now, I think we're just over 4,000 followers of people who are interested in uh, landscape architecture and sustainability options and what are the new technologies coming out and how are people handling some of these sustainability uh, issues as well as uh, some really cool uh, garden designs and uh, commercial designs and et cetera. Yeah, and you can see the all the photos of the beautiful projects on the site. So Ed, thanks for coming on the show today and getting creative with me. Thank you very much for having me, Evan. That's it for another episode of Get Creative. You can find more information about my guest in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe so that you get the next episode in your sleep. And please give the show a review. For more information about me, go to evanschmidt.com, follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn, and watch my vlog on YouTube where I share lessons that I've learned. Thank you for listening. Now go get creative.